Prince William takes a significant step concerning Queen Camilla and his brother. Recently, King Charles permitted Camilla to deliver a national public address, which has generated considerable debate among the British populace. This Armed Forces Day marks a notable occasion as the nation hears from the Queen Consort instead of the King for the first time in quite a while. This brings up an intriguing question. Did Charles delegate this responsibility to Camilla, or was the decision influenced by someone else? Given that Charles is the head of the British Armed Forces, why was Camilla selected for such an important role? There is speculation surrounding the recent push to elevate Camilla's status. Is this effort coming from within the royal family, or is there an ulterior motive? Some online comments suggest frustration regarding what they view as Charles's attempt to enhance Camilla's standing. She has previously expressed pride as the daughter of Major Bruce Shand, yet critics contend that her appreciation for the armed forces seems disingenuous, arguing that a brief message from her would have sufficed. Others assert that aside from her father's military history, Camilla lacks a direct connection to the armed forces. In more recent news, Princess Catherine is set to resume her royal duties in early August following her recovery from cancer which included six months of chemotherapy. I maintain that the streamlined royal family is the right model for the future. This approach aligns with trends in other European monarchies and addresses common concerns regarding taxpayer expenses. I believe that both the King and William are correct in their commitment to keeping the core working royals a small, accountable group. Adding more working royals to the roster could heighten public criticism. William's strategy of occasionally involving his cousins to invigorate the royal scene as older members step back seems to be a promising solution. His royal highness is unlikely to invite any new working royals, and it remains uncertain if he will want his two younger children to take on royal roles. Reports suggest that Prince William and his wife plan to encourage George and Louis to seek careers outside the royal sphere, while their eldest, George, is expected to follow the working royal path. By the time William becomes king and Catherine assumes the role of queen, they might prefer to have only a few full-time royals, which is William's vision. The roster of working royals has shifted in recent years. The departures of the Sussexes in 2020, followed by the deaths of Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth II in 2021 and 2022, as well as Prince Andrew being stripped of his titles, resulted in a loss of five working royals within a short span. Currently, there are 11 working royals, including King Charles, his siblings Princess and Prince Edward, and the Duke of Edinburgh along with Queen Camilla. At 42, William is the youngest working royal, sharing this role with the Princess of Wales, who is currently on a break due to her ongoing cancer treatment. Kensington Palace has not yet announced her official return date, but when she does, the focus may shift away from health struggles and the narrative surrounding a fragile monarchy. It's understandable that palace officials may not have a clear strategy to manage the simultaneous cancer diagnoses of both King Charles and Princess Catherine, especially considering the vulnerable position of certain members. For over 70 years, the Windsors enjoyed remarkable longevity. Queen Elizabeth II lived to 96, Prince Philip to 99, and the Queen Mother to 101. There once seemed to be no urgency for redundancy among senior royals, with three generations of future monarchs prepared to step in. Now, with King Charles's streamlined monarchy, the options for the royal family are becoming limited.